All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here at the Judson Women's Leadership Conference, <laughs> and we are with Allison Crowther yes, this morning right. of the Red Bandana Project. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank well, you so much. <laughs> thank you. It's an honor and a privilege to be here. Yes, a lot of great things are going to go on today, and you're actually a speaker here yes, today. Yes, I am. You will be speaking here today. And as we were talking a little bit earlier, you know, my husband was military, and I always say September 11th was the first day of the rest of my life, mm -hmm. and I'm sure a lot of us can relate as well as yes. yourself, so share with us. Well, uh, we lost our beloved son on September 11th. He was an equities trader for Sandler O'Neill and Partners. He worked on the 104th floor of the South Tower, mm -hmm. uh, but he was also a fully trained uh, volunteer firefighter and member of Empire Hook and Ladder Company out in Upper Nyack where we, where he grew up, where we live still. Uh, so he, um, after many months, we actually were able to uncover what happened to him. He was lost, he, but his body was recovered uh, in March of 2002. And in May of 2002, I was reading the story, Fighting to Live as the Towers Died. Mm -hmm. And in there were references to this mysterious man wearing a red bandana, mm -hmm. saving lives, putting out fires. Uh, he made, mul it turns out, um, he made multiple trips between the 78th floor sky lobby and the about 61st floor where there was uh, clear air, bringing victims down, going back up into the sky lobby and getting more people off and down. Um, he was ultimately recovered with um, uh, uh, Lieutenant Donald Burns, who was incident commander for the FDNY of the South Tower. Wow, wow, what a, what a, what a legacy and a, and a um, show of bravery and, and courage. So well, thank you. are very proud. Well, we are, and um, many things have transpired since yes. that have been very good, uh, one of which was um, uh, being approached by the Fetzer Institute based in Kalamazoo, Michigan, okay. to develop our next creative step. We started a charitable trust right away, the Wells Remy Crowther Charitable Trust. Uh, but. Ten years later, uh, we started work on the Red Bandana Project, which we created to uh, teach uh, character lessons to young people uh, from elementary school through um, high school. And now we're working on a curriculum for undergraduate at the high school at the college level. And the lessons are leadership, caring for others, team, the power of one, bridging divides, forgiveness, and carpe diem. Wow. So it's been a very powerful experience, and I um, worked with Vernoy Paolini, who is lead, uh, lead project manager, educator, and a team of wonderful educators, 30 to 40 years experience developing this. Um, and I travel around the country now, speaking at schools and corporations, talking about um, these lessons and the example that Wells left for us. And what message do you hope to share today, or would you like to share today with the audience? Well, I, I would like to share, uh, and I know this is, an, uh, this is a gathering for women, uh, I would like to share um, the, the inspiration that Wells gave us that, that, you know, it lies within each and every one of us to make a difference in this world, no matter what you face. And uh, women face many issues today. We all face issues, but, but uh, you know, women need to be empowered to know that they can accomplish, if they set their minds to it, they can accomplish anything a man can. Right. And there should be uh, no, no barriers to at least a attempting that. There, should, you know, there shouldn't be a spiritual barrier. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do need to train, you need, do need to learn whatever you know, field you are wanting to achieve in. Um, but there, there shouldn't be a barrier to that, uh, be just because you're a woman. So I, I want to carry that, that message forth. We're also very fortunate that a documentary film has been made about Wells. Uh, the, uh, the, and I'm going to be showing the first, one of the first ones that was made. ESPN did a beautiful 13-minute uh, piece produced by a friend of his at Boston College, Drew Gallagher. Mm -hmm. It won a sports Emmy the year it came out. Oh, excellent. And excellent. Um, I show this everywhere I go. It's a wonderful piece. And a longer documentary has been made. It's not released yet, but it's been going around to film festivals, mm -hmm. uh, produced by Matthew Weiss. Um, and that's called Man in Red Bandana. And a book is about to oh come my out. God. Oh, written going on. well we do <laughs> well our daughter wrote a, a wonderful book that has been out and published mm -hmm. um, I hope this is going to be recorded because it's really important he's <laughs> it's Tom Rinaldi who is a, a news commentator sports commentator for 
for, C, uh, for ESPN. Mm -hmm. uh, he is the one that wrote the script for the ESPN documentary. He's written a book for young people. It's about two, 200, it's a 215 more uh, mm -hmm. page book. And uh, that is about to be released. It's on pre-sale with Amazon, pre-order with Amazon now, mm -hmm. and it's going to be released September 6th. So we're very excited about Good that. It's going to be just beautiful. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, excellent, excellent. So many, many exciting things happen. Yes. And, and, uh, and is there anything else that you'd like to share? Anything else? Because you, you've got a lot of things on the horizon. Oh, any other nuggets my, that are gonna? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. It's always a surprise. You yeah. know, I'm already. Um, you know, scheduling speaking engagements at schools for for the fall. Um, I did uh, travel to Amman, Jordan, to speak to uh, ac academic, um, mm. religious, and business leaders in in uh, from Jordan, Palestine. Egypt, Sudan, and Lebanon. That was, that um, it was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. And I, uh, it was sponsored by um, the Institute for um, Peace and Justice, which mm -hmm. is based here in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. and the Royal Institute for Interfaith Studies, which mm -hmm. is based in Amman and is one of Prince Hassan bin Talal's special projects yeah. where he attended. He's the brother of the late King Hussein and the mm -hmm. uncle of the current King Abdullah II. So, it, and the people I met there were so wonderful, yes. really. It was, and, and so determined to learn, and that's why I was invited mm -hmm. to learn about how to teach their young people mm -hmm. to uh, be more compassionate and understanding mm -hmm. of others. And uh, because they're very concerned about what's going on, yes. uh, they all condemned uh, the actions of the of yes. the terrorists. They yes. said these people are criminals right. and sociopaths. That's yes. right. They they were very firm about that. Yes. All of them. So, um, so that's a message I I feel I should carry for them. I said I will carry that message yes. <laughs> to our country. You know, when you travel internationally, and we talk to other people in other parts of the world, and I've traveled internationally, they find that. A lot of times they just want the same things that we want. Absolutely. They want the same things that we want. They're good people and they, like you said, just condemn the actions of the small part of the population of which we judge the whole right. entire population. Right. So, you know, that's wonderful that you have shared, you know, with the audience, you know, that message that, you know, they want to um, teach their, sh their children compassion. They yes, condemn yeah. those you know, acts, those acts and those persons do not represent them. So that is really wonderful. That you well, thank you. And and another concern that they mm -hmm. had was um, in Jordan, which is a relatively small country, yes. and they consider themselves not the wealthy, <laughs> which I found so interesting. Right. But anyway, um, because of the, you know, the great, they're not the oil yes. uh, country Arabs. Yes. The, uh, they are very concerned because they were getting, at that point last year, they had 30,000 refugees from Syria in their country. Yeah. And they were, they were very concerned about integrating these young, making them feel a part of their country yes. uh, and how to do that so that they don't end up with their own homegrown terrorists down the road. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, they, that's the important thing, I think, about communication about yes. about bridging divides, bridging divides right and, and caring for others and trying yes. to understand uh, people and and listen to to what people have to say um, uh, so because that's when you realize that yes and and, uh, and that was my parting message mm -hmm. to them basically yes. is to bring your young people together outside of any framework of religion mm -hmm. don't you know just bring them all together from all their different backgrounds and let them get to know each other as human beings just as you were saying mm -hmm. with all the common needs and and desires and goals that we all have, that we all have and we all share for a better life yes. and um, and then learn about the differences right. but first understand the commonality of who mm -hmm. of, of, of who we all are each other mm -hmm. you know i think we could talk all day long we could but i know that you <laughs> have to get going so i need a cup of coffee you. anyway yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so thank, thank you very you much, much paul it was Alice lovely Crowther with us here from the red thank bandana you. project thank you much success and you. visit our website oh yes, yes www.crowthertrust.org or um redbandanaproject.org. We have two websites, and the Red Bandana Project is all about the educational uh, work that, that
that we are doing and spell bandana with a double n with a double n <laughs> b-a-n-d-a-double-n-a -N -N -A, and you'll find us <laughs> thank you so much thank you thank you so much you're welcome bye-bye